Hmm. You think this might be a little bit excessive? Nah. Hello everyone, welcome back to Regrowth. So, <laughs> I have built a massive engine block. This thing is creating that lovely thousand RF per tick. I've also made a dedicated fuel field for it. All the stuff on here is set up to be a nice little auto farm. All it needs is a mean of actually uh, harvesting it. Yeah. Let me show you this cool new little tool I have, an Alumite Scythe. If I right-click on these things, they will just be harvested in a very wide area. The Solignolias here will prevent me from getting just swarmed with items. The Hopper Huck in the center will pick them up. And they will go into this little drawer. Next to this drawer is this auto crafter, which turns them into coal. And you can see the coal draining out. That's because we have a system underneath. These emerald pipes are just like wooden pipes, but they are faster and they can be filtered. Going into this gigantic drawer. Yeah, I just need a uh, empty hand to show you. Uh, for drawers, if you sneak right-click, you can view their upgrades. This is just one short of full storage, and it is voided, meaning that any excess will be destroyed instead of ejected. The coal is coming into this buffer drawer, being drawn out again, and being piped over into the fuel box. It is being injected using this clay pipe, which is a somewhat smarter pipe. If there is no room in the inventory it tries to put in, instead of just ejecting the item out into the world, it will try and put it into either another inventory or into a pipe, which you can see here is running back into the drawer. So, the only thing we need to make this entirely self-sustaining is either a robot or a golem. Now, I was thinking that we would go with golems, but to get into Thomcraft, we need to make these Thomcraft tables in order to set up a research station. And these tables specifically want great wood planks. And to make ourselves a great wood sapling, we need some witchery stuff, some essence, that's all easy, but then we need a tree fid seed. And to make that, we are going to get, need to get farther into witchery, because it requires these tears of the goddess, which we can only get from a distillery. It is going to require uh, this mutandus extremis, which we have to make in a cauldron. And both the cauldron and the distillery are going to require us to build an altar. So that is going to be a little bit of magic doing. Alternately, we could try and build a robot, which is going to require us to make a bunch of lasers to make that redstone crystal, to make the chipsets, and all that. To make lasers, we are going to need this mana lens, which is going to require just some more rune crafting. That's all easy enough. It's going to require mana diamonds. That's just some mana. And it's going to require titanium. Titanium is a little bit difficult because it means... Well, in order to get titanium, we get it from rutile seeds, which is going to require a block of titanium in the first place. So in other words, to get titanium, we are going to have to go into the nether and find nether rutile ore. And I'm not sure what its mining level is. It could be 
that in order to get that rutile ore, we will need a thaumium pick. Yes. So we are kind of stuck doing a little bit more witchery. Also, between episodes, I widened out some of our paths and I made them glowy with our magic little hidden hidden glowstone nook trick. I dug out a maintenance corridor for these pipes, and I have built this entire pipe out of diamond kinesis pipe, which is unnecessarily huge, but it is good idiot proofing. And you see I have the path right over there to our machines here. Yeah, I was just making sure we had connection. Check it out. This is so cool watching the power just... Warm. There's so much of it coming in, it has to do it in bursts. Just... Warm. So cool! I have also done a ton of plant breeding. We have triple ten of pretty much everything that we can get right now except for rutile seeds. I made a small thomcraft area. Put this in this chest. I made a small thomcraft area expecting we would be getting into this today. As yes, you can see the lovely glowing paths here. Yeah, here is the witchery nook. I made it out of this lovely blue nether brick, and as you can see, it is also glowy. But, unfortunately, it is not yet to be. But, hey, now we have that area laid out. We can start building it up later. So... To get into the next part of witchery, we need to build ourselves an altar. The altar is a little bit of an interesting device. It draws power from natural elements around it. Trees and grass and water and things like that. So you basically have to design yourself a witchery grove, for lack of a better word. And it provides that power in... I'll use Hawthorne. It's nice and brightly colored. Actually, let's use the logs. It's not like I won't be farming. Yeah, I farmed up a whole ton of witchery stuff in between episodes, too, because I was trying to grind rep to see if I could get the Thaumcraft quests unlocked and also because I wanted to finally get that mutandus, those mutandus plants. And I did. I had to go through, like, at least two and a half stacks of mutandus. It was horrible. But here we have ember moss, we have glimmerweed, and we have this Spanish moss, which grows off the sides of trees. And I still need to spread it to the remaining trees. So that was a lot of work. Oh dear. That was a lot of grinding. But yeah, the altar spreads power in the 14 blocks surrounding it. So let's just get to roughly the center of the Thomcraft area. Let's go out a couple blocks and let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm not going to do the full 13, I'm just going to do 11, 12, because I'm not quite sure where the center of the altar is. Oops. Because it is a bit of an oddly shaped thing. Yeah, that's kind of pretty, and we'll make a cross out of this. And we'll do, I guess, one, four, at nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect! It matches up very nicely with the land that we have. Do I have enough space this way? At nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yes! Yes, it do!
I still haven't tracked down... I lost count. I still haven't tracked down all the caves that these zombies are in. I found one. It was just like a, t a teeny tiny cavern. One, two, three. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Perfect. Too perfect. I need to clear more of this land. But yeah, this is the area we will have to work with for our altar. So long as we have a witchery device within this area, and the altar will be right here, it should be able to receive power from it, and a little buffer area around it, but I will not rely on that. Okay, so let's make the altar itself. It shouldn't be terribly difficult. I believe we have all the materials on hand. <laughs> there it is. Yes, it gives you three blocks, so you need to make two of those. It requires Exhale of the Horned One and Breath of the Goddess. I do not have everything I need... Those are from vanilla trees, I believe, actually. Yeah, the uh, Exhale of the Horned One is from Oak, and Breath of the Goddess is from Birch. Okay, so I have some trees to grind. I will talk to you in a minute. Okay, here we are. All the fumes necessary to enchant our altar. As you can see, in order to make the altar properly, you need these six blocks, and that is why I am unsure where its center is, because it is not... Yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to center. But it forms up into this lovely red-carpeted multi-block when you form it. Now, if I right-click on it, you see it has a couple hundred units of power already. I think that might just be from this hawthorn wood sitting here. Now, if I put down a couple units of dirt, it might take a moment to update, but that should... Maybe it needs to be grass. Let me go get a pasture seed. Yes, that's what makes sense. Dead dirt is not exactly magical. Nature magical. Magical. There it goes. So yeah, when it has these grass box blocks nearby, it will gradually increase in power up to a certain point. You can't just flood the area around it with grass blocks and build them up, like, deep into the ground and expect to gain a ton of power from that. Eventually, you reach a point of diminishing returns, where having just one type of nature block is no longer helping. But thankfully, I think there are just tons and tons of blocks... Like, we saw that I was probably getting some points from that hawthorn wood. Let me just test that theory. And here we are, 346. If I place a couple of rowan wood, yeah, that, that does the trick. Does that do the trick? Did it cap out at just two? Let's see, 352. Did anyone else hear a tone? Okay, that it just takes it just takes a moment to upgrade. Okay, so yeah, you see, it's giving us five points for that piece of rowan wood, and I believe it counts each type of wood separately for the diminishing returns. Oh, that's the noise that I heard. Interesting. So it doesn't have to be necessarily a tree that you chop down. It can you can just 
put down wood and... Yeah. Let's see if I can fight you without the advantage of leaves to block you. Ents tend to be a little bit dumb. They charge in just one direction. If you back up and strafe, you can avoid them. You just kind of keep your distance. I should have my regen food on my bar, but oh well. It's not a huge deal. There you go. Smoking all that ganja reduces your reaction times, you know. Okay, so I am going to build myself a lovely little grove here. I will talk to you in a minute. There are a couple of blocks that will help out with the altar that I need Silk Touch in order to get. Thankfully, with Tinker's Construct, Silk Touch is fairly easy. You just make those silky cloths that you just saw me assemble, put them around an emerald, and you can put that on any tool you like to make it silky. Now, you see there it has mining speed 4.9, while before it has 7.9. That's part of the price you pay. But... We do now have redstone to try and make up for that. So let's see, that... Yeah, we're already back up beyond where we were. And believe it or not, this tool is not as pimped out as we can possibly make it just yet. It is still possible to put more modifiers on it using some rare materials. And once we get Thaumium, we might be able to get an additional modifier by replacing the handle. So, we can make this thing even faster. Or we could make it tougher. That will be very, very useful. After a lot of mutzing and futzing around, I decided that having the grove up on top gave me pretty much no room to work with. So instead, I... Oops, excuse me, lag. I smoothed out all this area and made some mossy cobblestone, and sadly not even just native co mossy cobblestone counts as a living thing. And I went underneath the altar and I dug out a nice little grotto. So, a little bit about how all these things work. Some things, there's differences between the types of items, like you can have up to 20 red mushrooms and up to 20 brown mushrooms. Um, other things, there's not. Like, these witchery saplings I have here, they're all just ruins, and that counts for all witchery saplings. I won't get any more points just putting hawthorns in here. But there is a difference between uh, witchery saplings and vanilla saplings. And yeah, we just have tons and tons of plant life. Flowers and cacti and sugar canes and giant mushroom blocks. The witchery plants, tons and tons and tons of stuff. That is another point in favor of putting this underground. I don't have to worry about the ember moss. And all of that junk gives me a little over 2,500 points of power to play with. Now, I've read up on what some of the more endgame stuff is going to cost, and that is not enough. There are more natural blocks that will give me points, but they are going to require me digging down another layer in the grotto, and it would just be a huge infrastructure project, and I kind of want to get over the uh, block that I have towards getting into Thomcraft, because I have been talking about Thomcraft for freaking ever. So I could just go with that, but there are a few things we can do to make the altar even better. There are things you can put on top of the altar. Like, for example, 
you see here we have 2500x1. If we put a skull on top, suddenly it's up to x2. And we have 5,000 points in there. Now, if we got a wither skull, it would go up to x3. And if I somehow finagled my way into getting a player's skull, which uh, I've not had my own skull drop any of the times I've died yet, it would go up to x4. We aren't getting a wither skull because that would require going to the nether and that you... you uh, you know my feelings on that. Ugh. There are also other upgrades we could put on there. For example, uh, if we put on a torch, it would increase its recharge rate. And it would increase its recharge rate even more if we put on a candle... candelabra. No? Was... did the wiki lie? Ah. Candelabra, but that's going to require this little grape-flavored stone here, which is going to require dragon stone, which I don't feel like getting right now. And I don't actually have any torches on me because I switched over to glowstone nooks. Oh yeah, let me show you glowstone nooks real quick. I have here this microblox saw, and I have some glowstone in my inventory. And just all you do is you da da, and you saw, and you saw. And you saw, uh -huh. and one more, and that gives you 32 nooks out of a piece of glowstone. And they're actually even brighter than torches, and they are so teeny tiny, very inconspicuous. Good lighting, at least until we can get blood torches. Anyway, so I just need to get a proper torch to put on there. I think I have one just sitting in miscellany. Here we are. And I'm not sure if that actually reflects in the altar's UI. Let us see. X3. Yeah, but no, no points. Maybe the X2 is the recharge rate? Anyway. Uh, the other thing we could put on there is an Arthana. Uh, that's just a stick, an emerald, and some gold. I have all that in my chest. And the Arthana will actually increase the range of the altar even more. It will double it, I believe. So, in a way, I kind of mismeasured its layout, but I think it's a pretty good size work area as it is. But yes, if you did not want to build a grotto, that would be part of how you help yourself out, and apparently this counts as a sword. The Arthana I talked about briefly when I was hunting for creeper hearts. I just happened to get one as a drop, but the Arthana is special in that if you kill a monster with it, it will increase some rare drops. Shift right click. Okay. And there's some other accoutrements we can put on there, like uh, um, pentacles and stuff like that. But this is a pretty good setup for now. So, what all are we going to do with our 5,000 altar points? Well, while I was quest grinding, uh, trying to unlock the Thomcraft quest, I actually made a Witch's Cauldron. But let me just show you how, I'm, how you make that. You make this anointing paste, which is just made out of the various types of seeds. And you make yourself a vanilla cauldron. Which I am out of iron. Oh, no, wait. No, I'm not. I still have some in the masked casting, casting basin. You make yourself a vanilla-style cauldron, and you just plunk it down, and you right-click it with the paste to anoint it. Very fancy. This witch's cauldron allows us to make a couple of interesting new things. Um, for one thing, it can make mutandus much easier, but it requires altar power in order to process things. 
So uh, let me let me put this down just right here, and let me get myself a uh, water source because it does need water inside of it in order to work. And I'll just make this right here. I might dig out a little uh, proper pump hole and have pipes going up into this in a little bit and maybe pretty it up and hide it. And, dip, dip, dip. and it needs nether rack, burning nether rack, in order to be heated. Which the grotto might get in the way of that. I should have put it down lower. Hmm. And I think I need a flint and steel. I'll just keep that in my bag from now on. Okay, let's see if I have room for this. If not, I can just build a little thing up on the surface. This is just above the melons, that's no problem. Okay, let's put that here. And zot za. Okay. And then I am stuck in the grotto. And of course, now I need to actually move the damn thing again in order to light it. Crickle crackle. Does it need all three buckets of water? There it goes. It's bubbling away. And I believe that, for example, we can make Mutandus much easier in this thing. There it goes. Yeah, it's just Mandrake Root, Exhale of the Horned One, and an Egg. Maybe not easier, but it's with alternate ingredients, and you get a whole six of them. So let's do that. Let's do a Mandrake and Exhale of the Horned One, and let me run over and get some eggs. I like having high step. I'll just grab a whole stack and keep them around. And I believe you have to throw these in in order. And I don't think standing in the boiling water hurts you. So what's the order? Uh, da, 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 da. Come on. There we go. Uh, Mandrake, breath, egg. Mandrake, breath, egg. You see it turns colors and it bubbles up. And we might see a spark come from the altar, but maybe not. And we get six mutandus. And Zot is how and ah, we might see Well it's it's yeah, it's recharged by now. But I think that costs like a hundred altar points and they recharge very, very quickly. Okay, so have we resolved any quests? How the world grows. Excellent. Now we have all this. Okay, next it wants us to make... That's good timing. It wants us to make Mutandus Extremis, which is processed from regular Mutandus with a nether wart. I'll just go grab six. It's nice having all the work areas separated, but it's kind of sucking running around whenever I need something from a different area. I definitely can't wait until I have applied energistics. I am going to have terminals just freaking everywhere. And I think I can throw in multiple of this. Let's test it. It's sparking. I got one. 
Do I maybe need to refill this? Nope, it only does one at a time. Oh well, a lesson was learned. <sighs> okay, mutant is extremist, then it wants me to make that into a mutating sprig. Ah, oh, and the mutantist extremist is one of the things we needed for the tree fed seed that we're after, so that's good too. Okay, mutating sprig. That's a wart, a twig, and the extremist. Okay. A wart. A twig. I have a crap ton of those. A wart, a twig, and a mutantus. And this one, I think, should actually cost a fair whack. We might be able to see it. No? Yeah, you see, that cost 3,000-ish points. So setting up that grotto was a necessary evil. Now the mutating sprig, I think, is used in a couple of, like ritual things. Yeah. And next it would probably want this stone, but I am holding off on advancing Batania until I can get golems, because I want to make an auto mana gen. So, I believe the way the world feels, yeah, it says the Matergy, but I still haven't unlocked those quests. But I will give the quests a pass, I think. Because I just want Thoncraft for its own self. Okay, so... That Trefid seed. I think the other thing we need for it is a distillery. Yes. The distillery is another device that needs altar power to work, and that requires the Attune Stone. Damn it. Damn it. Okay. Well, we are going to have to make Mana Seal to get that, because we are going to need Dragonstone, which requires the Alfheim Portal. So, to make that, we are going to need... A terrestrial agglomeration plate, which is going to require a bunch of runes, some lapis, which I have, and a bunch of mana steel, which is easy. And I think I'm on my last rune for a couple of those, so I am going to do some more rune crafting, and I will get back to you when I am ready to start producing terra steel. However, the footage of my journey to terra steel took up enough to make an episode in and of itself. So we will be doing that next time on Regrowth.